QuickBooks Online 2023 cash payment for inventory linked to purchase order or PO created in the past. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation with the 30 day free trial. We also have the free QuickBooks Online sample company file open if you wanna have these two things open at the same time. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. And we suggest using the incognito window or another browser to open the sample company. You can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome with the three dots in the browser and the new incognito window, then search for QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We'll be using the sample company to compare and contrast the accounting view, the view Get Great Guitars will be in, and the business view, the view the sample company will be in. You can toggle back and forth between the two views by going to the cog drop down and toggle the views on down below. We're gonna be opening up some reports now. So we're gonna to go to the tab to the left, right click and up and duplicate the tab as we do every time. Right click on the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle so we can go down to the reports on the left, opening up the major financial statement report of the balance sheet as we do the, every time. By the way, in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview and then in the reports. So you can find the reports there in the business view. Gonna go to the tab to the right and then open up the uh, reports again, once again, and then the P to the L, the profit to the loss. We're gonna close up the boogie, the hamburger, in other words, and do the changing of the range in from a 10123 to 123. Run it to refresh it. Nothing's in it yet because we haven't done anything for the current period to the income statement yet. We're getting there. We're getting there though. Closing up the ham boogie on the balance sheet, changing the range for that one too from a 10123 to 123. Run it to refresh it. That's the setup process we do every time in prior presentations. We have been uh, putting together the beginning balances. We put in the investments. We bought our property plant and equipment and now we're in the process of buying inventory our scenario here being that we sell guitars so we're purchasing now guitars we're using a perpetual inventory system and we're using a purchase order which we did last time in order to request the guitars which is only a form that you would use if you have that capacity to request the guitars before you actually pay for them or whatever inventory that you are purchasing. So in the prior presentation, I'm gonna to go to the tab to the left. We hit the new button and we made purchase orders. The first step in the process to buying the inventory, but one that doesn't actually have a financial transaction related to it. So typically when tracking the purchase orders, we do that internally. So and that's normally done over here on the expenses side, because that's kind of like the vendor cycle. You've got your vendors down below. And if you wanted to see that, by the way, in the business view, that's gonna be in the get paid and pay area. And then you got your pay area down below and the vendors, that's where it's located there. And then if I close the hand boogie, you can search by the open purchase order. So there's five purchase orders. So then I can see the vendors that have the purchase orders and you can see the number of purchase orders here. Another place often you can go to in order to see the purchase orders. If I hit the ham boogie and we go down to the expenses and we go into the expenses tab, this is located a little bit differently in the business view. This item is in the bookkeeping area over here, bookkeeping and then the transactions tab up top and then your expenses tab. So it's a little bit, little bit different uh, in the business view than you might originally expect. 
as you're switching between the two views. So then uh, in here, you've got your expenses. If I close this up, you can filter then and possibly filter by your purchase orders. So we go down to the purchase orders and then you can have all your purchase orders or we can filter by the open or closed purchase orders. So if I go to the open purchase orders, they're all open at this point in time. Now, however step we do this, the next uh, thing or the next item we expect to happen, the next series of events <laughs> that would happen, as we can see in our flow chart over here, would be that we had the purchase order. Now we're going to receive the inventory. So at the point of receiving the inventory, we could either enter a bill at that point, which we can populate from the purchase order. A bill is a specific form that increases accounts payable, and then we can, in essence, pay the bill. Uh, or we can enter simply just a check for it at that point in time. So we're going to imagine we receive a box of guitars, which is our inventory from the vendor. In this case, we're going to start with Epiphone. That's who we buy our guitars from. And in the box, they have a bill. Uh, with it so and the, and the note that the bill might say invoice on it because to them if they were using quickbooks it would be an invoice but the bill from our perspective is is depending on what side of the table we're on when we think about the software so we might call it an invoice they invoiced us or they billed us you can call it whatever you want but when you get into the quickbooks it's a very specific term even if it says bill on it i might not enter it into the system as a bill I might just pay the bill by writing a check or expense form at that point in time. And that's what we'll start off doing this month. And then next month, we'll do more accrual transactions where we'll enter more bills uh, rather than, uh, the ex than just writing the checks. Right now, we're going to try to write the checks whenever we can for the first month. And then we'll kind of switch it up when we do the second month so we can see all different kinds of transactions. So that's going to be the general idea. We're going to now go into these purchase orders either here, searching for them here when we get the box of goods, and then we're going to uh, make make a bill or a check form out of it at this point in time. Now, also just realize that if you had a larger company, as the company gets bigger, you might have someone counting the the inventory in like a warehouse or something like that. Oftentimes, you would like them to be able to count the inventory without having access to the purchase order because then they'll actually physically count the inventory and they won't just know what the number is. So that's one internal control you can kind of think about as you kind of, as you, as you scale up. But typically we would expect the box of guitars to match the numbers that we had on the purchase order. So over here, we've got our options of sending. We can send the purchase order again. We can copy it to a bill, but we're not gonna make a bill this time. We're gonna make uh, an, a check or expense type of form and so we're not going to do this step this time. Instead, we're going to go to the plus button up top and we can go to an expense or check form. Remember, these are two basically almost identical forms in that they decrease the checking account. But the check form, of course, has a check number related to it, imagining that we're actually physically writing the check or printing the check out of the system. So we're going to make this for Epiphone. I'm going to say it's for Epiphone. There's our vendor. And then as we do that, notice QuickBooks has this nice thing over here that says, hey, I'm paraphrasing. We've got these two, these two items and this bill down here. We're just going to add these items in to connect it out. So I'm going to say purchase order. Let's add the information from the purchase order that you entered last time. And then I'm going to add this purchase order as well. So we're going to add those. Now, if I scroll down, we can see the activity, but let's just populate the, the, the top of it here just to make sure I get everything the way we want it. It's a cash and we're going to say, okay, mail in, let's pay, let's make it as of the 14th this time. So let's, that's good. That's good date. Let's keep it there. And then I'm going to make the check number. Now, if I'm actually physically writing checks, then I'm going to start with one. Oh, I'm going to put one Oh, Oh, four in the check number here to try to match our bank reconciliations that we'll do. Uh, at the end of this in our practice problem if you're actually writing the check then uh, you could print it later meaning you'd have to actually buy physical checks put them into the printer and then use quickbooks to print the check or you might have a checkbook for example that you're manually writing the checks which already have a check number on it and you want to make sure that you're tying out the check numbers here to the physical checks that you're writing which you should only have to do the first time you enter the check because everyone after that should should automatically populate the check numbers.
Now also note you got the links up top. So if you got two, two links that are indicated, if you click on that, you can actually go to the purchase orders that are used to and, and to populate here. That is a really good feature within QuickBooks, these links uh, between the forms, which if you've learned accounting from just debits and credits in like a classroom, uh, you might not have a full appreciation of. Uh, so you want to kind of get an idea of how all these forms are tied together. Notice that we're not using the, so if I scroll down here, we've got the check number. We're not using the category tag because we're not applying this check for something like the purchase of uh, at the telephone bill or something like that, where we would just assign the category. So I'm gonna collapse that, but instead we're using the items, the inventory items that we set up, and then we put them into the purchase order. So the items are gonna be what drives the transaction that will be impacted when we record this. So we've got our list of items here that we populated directly from the purchase order. And then we've got our amounts the amounts are the amounts at cost, not the not the sales price. This is what they put them on there at cost. Also note that we've got these two people here that we have the customer added because we imagined that we bought these items specifically for this customer and we want to turn around and make an invoice for them now that we have the items. And this kind of gives us a reminder of that. We also have the links over here that give us an indication that each of these line items are linked. We could add more to this check uh, as well down here with items that are possibly not linked and so on. And you could, you could sort these two if you wanted to sort them. Uh, notice that you have this billable option here. The, if you've used the desktop version, this is one area where the desktop version I think has this kind of worked out a little bit better than the online version because you would think you can kind of check these off as billable items and then when you when you turn around to invoice eric music i'll just test this out just to show you then then these items will pull over into the invoice but the problem is i believe they're going to pull over at cost instead of pulling over the sales price even though we're using an item so you might be used to that with the desktop version you got to be very careful of it here i'll just show you what i mean uh, right now but before i do that i'm going to go to the tab to the right right click duplicate another tab i'm going to pull that all the way to the left just so i can check out a couple things here so i want to go to the sales tab and just see where our products and services so if i go into a product and service here which if you were in the other view the business view would be under the get paid and paid area and then under the get paid it would be under products and services so there it is under the business view if we looked at some of these inventory items, notice we've got the cost and the sales price. So those are different. We're buying them now. We're gonna be buying them at the cost. And then when we sell them with an invoice, we'll be that, that should populate with the sales price, not the cost. But oftentimes when we use this billable form in the online version, it's not able to, to pull over the fact that the item, it's not pulling over the item, it's pulling over the billable kind of component to it, the cost kind of component to it. So that, that's a little bit little bit wonky there or a little bit different than you might see on the desktop version if you're used to that. So just be aware. The other thing I wanna point out is if I go to these options to turn that billable item on, we went into the cog up top and we went into the account and settings. Then we went into the expenses and then we went into the bills and expenses. And right here you see it says, uh, make expenses and items billable. And then down here it says track billable expenses and items as income. That means when I pull it over, it's gonna put it into hopefully an income account instead instead of like reimbursing like an expense type of account. But it still may not pull over the actual sales price, but rather the cost, even though it's gonna put it into an income account. What we would like it to do is be driven by the item uh, to determine where it's gonna go in terms of the account that will be impacted. But that's the feature that kind of tells you that, that that billable thing is there. Okay, let's close out this whole tab now. I'm gonna close out this whole tab and then go back to our check form. So the check form looks good. What's this gonna do? Well, it's a check form. It's gonna decrease the checking account. And the other side is gonna be going to, driven by these items, the inventory account, putting them on the books. And then it's also gonna have a subledger effect in that it's going to also be tracking the units of inventory because we have a perpetual inventory system set up so let's check that out 
So at the bottom, we have the option cancel clear. We can print the check. We can order checks. We can make this reoccurring and we can void and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, let's save and close it down below. And then just to let you know what happens on the invoice, we're not going to actually uh, populate the, the invoice yet or record it, but let's hit the plus button and just imagine that we turned around and sold this to that customer, which was Eric Music. So if I go to Eric Music tab, we've got this item to pull in, but notice that if I pull this item in, if I add this item in, it puts it on there at $400, which I believe is the cost because if I was to type this in ELP, it should pull in the sales price, which is $500 per, per unit. That's the problem. So we could kind of use this to, to show when I put in Eric Music that the billable item is going to pull over, but it's not like a perfect link right there because again, it's not really using the item to record it. It's kind of using that billable feature and so that kind of that'll mess things up a bit so be quite careful of that we'll talk more about some of the issues with that billable item later and we'll record this in the future and just show how that will work uh, so do you want to leave without saving i'm going to say yes i'm not going to save this yet we'll do that in the future let's go to the balance sheet now and run the report i'm going to hold control scroll up a bit we should see then the checking account's going to go down so if i go into the checking account we could check out the checking there's the check form number other side going to the split account because there's multiple line items that's why it goes to the split even though all of the other one went to the income or the uh inventory account there it is closing that back out and then i'm going to go back to the form the other side's also on the balance sheet under inventory so if we go into inventory then we should see that that check there it is there it is looks good mui b to the n and so notice that it put it in here these are all the same check and it put it in here in multiple line items matching the line items that are in the on the uh the form for the check let's also go to the tab to the right right click on it and duplicate the tab so i can look at the inventory report just make sure that that ties out because we're using a perpetual inventory system so that's going to be on the reports on the left hand side and I'm going to close the bookie and I could just type in here inventory. Let's look at the inventory valuation summary and range to the change from 010123. Let's just do <laughs> as of 123123. I'll just say the end of the year, even though we're at the beginning of the year. But this is the year to date. So we're at the 39,976. Here's our units of inventory thus far. That should tie out that 39,976 to what's on the balance sheet and it does so that's good news if i go back to the tab to the left and i was to sort and look for my open purchase orders i'm now in the expenses tab and the expense items and we can see we have a l lesser amount of open purchase orders if i look at my closed purchase orders we could see the ones that have now closed let's go to closed and then apply there's the two that I just closed. You can also see those two if I went to the expenses tab, vendors, and then now we only have three purchase orders open. If I wanted to just look at, at uh, clear the filters and I went into Epiphone down here, then I can, I can look at the activity for the purchase orders and then the checks that's, that is related to them. If I went into a purchase order here, for example, I can see it's linked to the check and I can see that it is closed. So that'll give me some nice activity for my facilitation of transactions with the vendors. Again, this is stuff that is not having an impact on the financial statements. So if you don't work in bookkeeping and you learned accounting from debits and credits in a textbook, you might again, not have an appreciation for some of this linkages within the forms but you need to get an appreciation for it because it's important on just you know the bookkeeping side to facilitate your transactions with the customers clients employees okay let's do another one for epiphone so if i hit the plus button here and if i went into the expenses and we went to the vendors uh the, the next one is gibson we want to do one for gibson so I can say, okay, if I go into Gibson here, here's our, our open purchase orders. 
let's do it the same way. So I'm not gonna create I'm not gonna create a bill from from it here. I'm just gonna enter a check and then it should pull that information into the check. So we're gonna pay it directly with the check. We'll do the bills next time. So we got a box of guitars that we we, we, we requested with a purchase order from Gibson USA. So if I type in Gibson USA, QuickBooks is gonna say, hey, there's two purchase orders that we have here. Do you wanna use those? We could add them one at a time like we did last time. I could just add all of them, just put all of them in there at once. That's what we're gonna do. And then we can tab through this thing. So that looks good. I think we can keep the date the same. Check number is now populating automatically now for writing a check with it. Let's actually bring the date up to like the 15th. I think that'll bring it up to the 15th. And then the categories, no categories because we're using the items. The items are the inventory items that pulled in. They're pulling in at cost. We've got this one item here that we purchased specifically for a customer. I'm going to click it off as billable again, just so I can point out that billable item when we pull it into the invoices and look at the benefits and costs of, of that. And so how we're going to work around that. And so there is that one. So let's, let's going to do the same thing. And it's going to increase the, the, it's going to decrease the checking account, increase inventory and the sub ledger should be increased for the units as well. So let's save it and close it. Check it out. If we go back to the tab to the right, and we run it again to refresh it. We only work with fresh stuff here, just like the produce department at the local trade place. Gibson, I don't know what I'm talking about. Here it is. There it is, boom. And we have that one there. Mui B to the end. And then I'm gonna close that out and then scroll up and go back. And then the other side is in the inventory. So inventory, we've got two line items on the check form, two line items here. And so that looks good. And then if we go to our report on the right, the inventory valuation summary, run it again. We are now at the 46868. This is the units of the guitars that we have. That 46868 should tie out to what we have here. Looks good. If I go to the tab to the left, then we can see that now in Gibson, we've got the check, which is now uh, the next thing that after we got the purchase order. Purchase order request, we paid for it with a check. That looks good. You can also kind of check out, check that out by going to the expenses and going to the expenses up top. And then I could say, I'm gonna filter now by the items that are open still and now we only have the one that's still open, the ukuleles, diamond head. One more round, one more round. Why? Because I didn't hear no bell. I only stop recording stuff when bells happen in my head. So I'm going to hit the plus button again, and we're going to go to the check form another time. This time for diamond head, diamond head. Your head looks like a diamond, man. What's wrong with you? That's just how it how it is so once again it says we're going to add it so we're going to add it there it is and then there that looks good so we'll keep the check number on that and then no category because the item pulled in so we've got the ukuleles now so and we're rounding it out with the ukes no one ordered the ukuleles here so no billable items we just like having some in the shop who doesn't like to have some ukuleles around laying around from time to time so what's it going to do same thing it's going to be decreasing the checking account other side going to inventory driven by the item here and the, the uh, sub ledger is going to be impacted as well for the units of inventory let's save it let's close it let's check it out one more time because we've got that one more round, you know, run it. You got to go strong through the last round. Go into the cash here. Diamond head. There it is. Let's go back. And then we're going to go down to the inventory. And once again, we've got the Gibson. So that's, we're looking for diamond. Head. There it is. Diamond head. It's out of order. It's out of order. You're out of order. Okay. Okay. Just finish things up here. You got, you got to finish things up. Okay. So then we also have over here on this side, I'm going to run up the, the valuation on the inventory. We're now at the 46, nine, 
40 for the, the four ukuleles, 46, 940, tying out to what's on the, the inventory. That looks good. If I go to the first tab then, we can see that there's nothing open still because we've now received all the stuff from the purchase order. So we only have closed purchase orders now at this point in time. That is good because we've got all this, we've got all our inventory. We're ready to sell stuff now. We haven't sold anything yet, but we're on our way. Now the, this is where the money's gonna start rolling in. We're set to start selling stuff. But hey, on your income statement, nothing's there yet. You haven't sold anything, not a thing. And you didn't even record an expense for all the stuff you purchased because we're gonna expense them when we sell them uh, in the future. That's how inventory works. We're gonna, we're gonna put it on the books as an asset. When are we gonna expense it? We're gonna expense it with the invoice forms and the sales receipts forms that we'll do in future presentations. So that's what we'll do. Let's go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate it and just check our numbers on the trusty trial balance. So you could follow, if you're following along, you can check your numbers. I think the best report to do that is indeed the trusty trial balance, close on the boogie, trial balance, trusty TB, not tuberculosis. It's trial balance, it's a good thing. 01023 to 123123. We're gonna run it. Here's our numbers. If you're matching up to what we have, great. If not, try to change the range, expand the range. If there's a change when you expand the range, then try to drill down on it. And if it's a date problem, change the date. That's troublesome to do in practice, but it's good to do in a practice problem. And uh, we'll be doing the transaction detail reports at the end of the month of data input and that often helps to find any any issues at that time as well